Dallas for Justice, Monday. Live from Dallas and Fort Worth, this is CBS 11 News at 5.30, the ones for Texas. And thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Pickett. Yes, mm -hmm. folks, the Thanksgiving holiday travel season is now underway at DFW Airport. They're expecting a record 2.5 million travelers from now through December 3rd. The busiest day for DFW is actually expected to be one week from today. Weather-wise, nice travel day for North Texans. Meteorologist Jeff Ray here with more of what it looks like for this week. Yeah, you know, weather for this evening looks great. It was a wonderful day. See, we got temperatures right now at 63. Of course, it is the parade of lights in Fort Worth. The, the trip, Christmas tree lighting was yesterday evening. But look at these temperatures. We're in the 60s. Finally had a nice warm day. Actually got up to 70 today. And if you're headed down to Fort Worth for the parade, you see how temperatures were softly going down into the 50s, thanks to that south wind. Okay, about the travel weather on Wednesday, if you're riding out to the west, you're going to run into some cold rain. It will be cold around the Metroplex with the rain showing up in the afternoon hours and especially by the evening hours. It looks like a wet Thanksgiving and temperatures only in the mid-50s. The very wet weather and winter weather will be farther, further up to the north in the central plains. We'll talk more about the high impact that we expect weather to have on the travel weekend coming up. Steve. Okay, sir, speaking of impact, a health alert continues today in response to a spike in flu cases. Officials with Dallas County Health and Human Services telling us the virus came earlier than normal this season. The county reports two consecutive weeks now of more than 10% of flu tests in area hospitals that have come back positive. And this is actually the earliest we've hit that threshold. Uh, since 2010, uh, which was the year we had H1N1. We don't know exactly what that means, but it's certainly concerning. Now, currently, influenza B cases are the most frequent cases here in North Texas and across the nation. Right now, we're family preparing for the funeral of a father. Service for Marquise Jefferson will be held tomorrow morning at Faith Temple. That's in Dallas. Jefferson, he died earlier this month at the Dallas Hospital. He is the but Tatiana Jefferson, she was shot and killed by a Fort Worth police officer in her home. This was last month. After that funeral tomorrow, Jefferson's family is expected to hold a news conference. Happening right now, family and friends are getting a chance to say goodbye to an Allen teenager who obviously touched a lot of lives. A public wake for Markel Ellis Jr. is being held in a Plano church. Yesterday, dozens of folks releasing balloons this is outside Allen High School. That's to honor the life of that young man who was killed at a house party last weekend. He's a strong person, and I just miss him so much. Markel is always happy. He always made everybody laugh. Markel is a brother to everybody. Markel's funeral will be held tomorrow morning. The family says that service is open to the public. In the last hour, we've learned that the Secretary of the Navy is out of a job. Richard Spencer has been under fire over a case involving a Navy SEAL. Now, a Pentagon spokesperson says Defense Secretary Mark Esper lost trust in Spencer over his handling of that SEAL case investigation and, quote, his lack of candor. That SEAL, Eddie Gallagher, posed next to a dead body of an ISIS fighter, which, of course, is against regulations. In campaign 2020 news, former New York, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, he makes it official. He now wants to join the fray and become the next president of the United States by getting the Democratic nomination. Meg Oliver now taking a look at the late entry into this contest. Michael Bloomberg joins a crowded field of 17 other Democrats vying to go up against President Trump next November. And now he's taking on him. To rebuild the country and restore faith in the dream that defines us. The ad debuting Sunday promises that under a Bloomberg presidency, the wealthy would pay more taxes and the middle class would get their fair share. Late to enter the race, Bloomberg is rolling out a more than $30 million ad campaign. The former three-term New York City Republican mayor and the founder of the media empire bearing his name has an estimated fortune of some $50 billion. Even before he jumped into the race, Bloomberg's Democratic opponents were raising his wealth as an issue. Maybe the argument is, hey, I've got 
got more money than the guy in the White House, I don't think they're going to buy that. We do not believe that billionaires have the right to buy elections. Aides say Bloomberg will fund his own campaign and does not plan to accept contributions. And they say if he wins the White House, he would not take a salary. But Bloomberg faces some obstacles, including sexist comments he's allegedly made about women. Last Sunday, he apologized to a predominantly African-American congregation for defending controversial stop-and-frisk policing when he was mayor. I realized back then I was wrong, and I'm sorry. At 77, he would be the oldest president to enter the Oval Office. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. With 10 weeks before primary voting begins, Bloomberg will not take part in the first four contests on the calendar. Now, last week, he did sign up to get on the ballot in the state of Texas in the Super Tuesday contest in March. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is out of the hospital this evening. The 86-year-old Ginsburg was admitted to a Baltimore hospital on Friday after experiencing chills and fever. Now, twice in the last year, Ginsburg has been has had a cancer diagnosis and a rare absence from a public session in court earlier this year. Denton Square preparing to roll out a new system to help visitors get around and safer. An all-walk crosswalk. It goes into effect tomorrow in Denton. Here's how it works. Those, those crosswalks at all four intersections of the downtown square will activate at the same time, allowing pedestrians to walk simultaneously. All cars will be stopped. No turns permitted. That goal is to hopefully eliminate pedestrian accidents there. This is a large portion of our customers. It's a large portion of people that come to Denton want to visit all of the shops on the square. I think it's super important to have an efficient way of just going around. We're told this is a six-month pilot project to test how effective it will be. Now, at the end of that time, Denton City Council will decide whether to keep that operation. The U.S. Postal Service is preparing for a pretty busy holiday season starting today. It is expanding Sunday delivery to most major cities to keep up with the demand. After this week, drivers will be essentially at their busiest. They expect to deliver 20 million packages a day through the end of the year. For an extra fee, now carriers will even deliver on Christmas Day. Southwest Airlines expanding its territory. It is a deal that means a whole lot of jobs with some pretty big salaries. Up next, the city that will reap those benefits from the Dallas space business. And that is no ordinary ballet performance you see right there. Why this unique take on the Nutcracker drew a pretty special audience to its theater today.